Now for a glimmer of hope in a sea of bad news. The Upper Highway Baby Home has been honored as the top NPO in bustling Durban. It's a desperately needed center in a country that sees around 4,000 babies abandoned every year. The Beacon of Hope was established in 2019 and gives infants what they really need, love and care. Co-founder Kerry Stanton joins us now to talk about the Best of Durban Readers Choice Award. Kerry Ann, a very good morning and a huge congratulations firstly. How are you feeling? Wow, thanks. Good morning to you guys. We are absolutely elated. Really shocked about winning the award um, with so much great competition, but really happy to be here and above all to give exposure to something that's really, really needed in our country. Yeah, let's talk about that, Kerry. I mean, 4,000 babies abandoned in a year. I didn't know that was the number, and I imagine it keeps rising, does it not? It absolutely does. And most people don't know that's the number because we only hear about the babies that, um, well, very often we only hear about the babies that are found alive, and we know that that's only about a third of the infants from our research and another PhD research, about a third of the babies um, survive that are actually abandoned. So the level of abandonment is, is it's actually of epidemic proportions. And our work in local communities shows that about 30% of high school girls have given birth in poorer areas that we work in, have in fact given birth um, to babies and of those, um, the actual moms that still have the babies is a very, very small number. So it's, it's a frightening statistic. And when we talk about process, Kerry, in as far as your involvement in the equation, what happens? So a baby is abandoned, you find it, and then what? Okay, so we don't necessarily find it. I wouldn't be able to you know, be everywhere and know exactly where babies are being abandoned. At the Upper Highway Baby Home, we actually look after full-time up to 12 infants. So those are abandoned babies or vulnerable babies. Um, but what, what, how the babies come to us, this is, this is, I think, the question that you were referring to, is um, either through the police or social workers out there, they find a baby that is abandoned, and then that baby goes and to the um, district surgeon, the baby is checked, and then the baby is brought to us. We then go to court with um, the social worker and uh, procedure starts like that. Another way that it can happen, of course, is um, a young person can place their baby, a young mom can place the baby in a baby saver, and more and more of these, luckily, thank goodness, are being um, built throughout the country. Now, those baby savers allow a young mom to place their baby or any mom to place their baby in those baby savers without leaving their details. It is slightly contentious because some people feel that it encourages um, abandonment. But actually, in South Africa, it is illegal to abandon your baby. So even if you feel that you have nowhere else to go, baby was um, conceived through rape, incest, or any of those cases, these, um, yes, there's a baby saver on the screen now. Um, these baby savers have saved so many lives and um, we're actually about to institute another one in our area just because unsafe abandonment, people, young people feel that they are forced to, un to unsafe abandon because they don't want um, themselves to be known. And then Kerry... So that's how the babies come to us. Sure, I get you. And thank you for, for that very clear picture. I now have an understanding of how things work. Uh, and as far as the pairing uh, these abandoned babies with potential parents who cannot have or make their own babies and would like to adopt a baby, how does that process work and how do you fit in the equation? Okay, so it's a very legal and statutory process. What happens is um, the social workers Certain social workers and certain agencies, Department of Social Development is the, is the government arm of this. And then there are a variety of NPOs in our area, um, Durban Child Welfare and Christian Social Services, 
can do this and um, amongst a, num a number of private social workers. What they would then do is they have already screened potential parents, so you can't choose a baby. That's against the Hague Convention, which is um, obviously the international law that um, protects children against child trafficking. What happens is you would have to become a, a screened potential parent and um, adopt a parent and go through all of that screening. And then once a baby is confirmed to be available for adoption, that process can commence. But we do keep the babies for at least 90 days. Um, this is in case whilst those um, investigations are happening by the police departments and social departments, a, a mother or family member for that baby can be found because first prize is always for a baby to stay in its family, but that is not always what happens. And I can imagine... And also a mother that has placed the baby for adoption has a period of time um, to change her mind. Say she is just overcome with emotion when the baby's born, and um, she thinks two or three weeks down the line that she's made the worst mistake of her life, the law allows for that, and the mom has time to change her mind, and then we begin a reunification process. That, I have to say, is first prize. But if that doesn't work, we proceed with um, the adoption process. As I said, the baby home places like us, who work to prevent abandonment and to keep babies safe, we don't run the statutory part of the process. That is run by qualified um, highly qualified social workers who have um, specialist qualifications in adoption. Kerry, thank you so much for your time this morning and congratulations once more. Uh, that was Kerry Stanton, the co-founder of Upper Highway Baby Home.